Welcome, I'm Dr. Charles Parker at CoreSight Blog, and if you've come to look for some fresh, interesting information about how to diagnose and treat ADHD, you've come to the right place. At CoreSight Blog, we have a series of YouTube videos talking about just this diagnosis itself. It's very interesting how confused we are by diagnostic interpretations that are based on appearances. If you think about it with ADHD, we're treating appearances, we're really not treating people. Yeah, we're treating people, but we keep chasing targets that are really superficial targets. And in that regard, we talked about hyperactivity, and we talked about acting without thinking. We talked about brain function as it relates to these diagnoses, more functional diagnoses rather than superficial descriptive. The way I look like I got a pink tie on, that's not going to take us anywhere. Hyperactivity is a descriptive diagnosis. Inattention is a descriptive diagnosis. We don't treat pink ties, as I've said in earlier videos. So we have acting without thinking. This is the prefrontal cortex. It has to do with thinking and acting synergistically together. If ADD is not present, they work together. If ADD is present, thinking and acting don't work together. So it happens acting without thinking, including all kinds of things from impulsivity to hyperactivity. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. That's the one everybody gets. The two most difficult ones to get are the one I just did a video on, and that was thinking, thinking, thinking without acting. That's, that's a difficult one, and I broke that down for you in another video. This third one is the least frequently recognized and is very much present in the number we see with adults all the time, and we certainly do see it in adolescents. Sometimes we see it even in young children. And it is this one right here. I'm not going to think. I'm not going to act. I'm not going to do either one. Please shut up and leave me alone. All right, now there are three subsets to that. Each one has its own significance. And actually... I, I kind of skipped over the fourth one, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it in because in the office I oftentimes can assess very quickly whether a person has this number fourth one. And I'll start with that, and that is avoidance of self. Some people come in the door and they're not even thinking about themselves. They don't want to be there. They're avoiding themselves. Please, doctor, be quiet. Don't ask me anything. My mother wants me to come here. I really don't need this aggravation. Avoidance of self. The next one is avoidance of close relationships. This is where individuals who become close to another person, the complexity increases. There are more and more variables. More stuff is going on. And hey, I just don't want to be involved. I hope you understand. Talk to you later. Got to go. And then the third subtype. So we've had avoidance of self, avoidance of close relationships. Now we're talking about avoidance of people in general. Now, people in general can, can be large groups where the variables are increasing and the structure is diminished. Increasing variables, diminished structure. We've talked about that. And the person will become panicky. People look at it as social anxiety disorder, phenotypically. On the surface, the way it looks on the tip of the iceberg, it does look like social anxiety disorder. But a lot of those folks really do suffer from attention deficit disorder. They are avoiding going out of the house because there are too many variables in groups, in cocktail parties, it's just too much and too many variables. I don't know what to say. Someone may ask you something and I really don't know the answer to it. And then the fourth one, which is really the obvious one of the four on avoidance, is avoidance of projects. Now this is where that whole idea comes together of avoiding uh, issues that have uh, increased variables with decreased structure. And so we see this in schoolwork, increased variables, decreased structure. It's a problem because we don't really know what we do, read a book, what's there. Whereas we can do video games, which have increased structure, very predictable outcomes, and a minimum number of variables that a person can master. So I'm going to do video games because I can deal with that. I'm not going to avoid that. So avoidance of self, avoidance of close relationships, too many variables, avoidance of groups, too many variables, and avoidance of projects. Again, too many unpredictable variables. People with ADD do very well with structure, and some people who have ADD love certain projects because it's all predictable. What is it they don't do? Unpredictable projects. A couple of quick hints. 
going from acting without thinking, thinking without acting, to I'm not going to think, I'm not going to act, please leave me alone. I know you know some people out there like that. Tune in for our next session. Thanks for your attention. Talk to you later.